Dean, welcome to Virtual Days. So we have a bunch of questions. I'm just going to jump right to it. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Cool. Uh, first one is, I'm an older. I'm on an older version of UD and UCMBD CMS. What's happening next year in regards to support for those older versions? What should I do? Okay, that's that's a, that's a that's a really good question. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> bear with me one moment because I did make notes about this. And it's uh, quite quite important. Uh, uh, th uh, topic for uh, some of our customers. Um, so, uh, some of the older versions of Universal uh, Configuration Management Database, or USIMDB, uh, are actually moving to an extended support next year. Uh, in, in particular, uh, the the 10.3x uh, uh, version uh, line of uh, of the product uh, are reaching the end of committed uh, reaching the end of committed support, which means generally defect support, critical security updates, and enhancement requests are no longer generally available. However, customers on the 10.3x version are encouraged to upgrade to the latest version, which uh, we refer to as uh, 2019.11 because we, we move from version numbers to uh, to the year and month that it gets released. Um, and then they'll get the full benefit of the, of the committed support. Um, but if they want to reach out to, uh, if a customer has obviously concerns, feel free to obviously reach out uh, to ourselves uh, through the, their normal channels, and, and obviously we can go into more details about that. Awesome. So we have another question, and uh, okay, this is another one from Rocky, and Rocky wants to know why is S and why is Smacks a uh, really gr big news? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, no, that's that's good. So I, I think I think the really uh, uh, important thing for us with uh, Smax is as a service management uh, platform, uh, we provide it in uh, lots of different ways. So from a point of view of uh, of, 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 of a product, um, you're getting a product that you can uh, always upgrade, which is uh, quite quite strange in the marketplace compared to some of our uh, competitors. Um, the functionality allows customers to uh, get that get that really quickly and move forward. Uh, allowing them to uh, any of the new features that we bring in, such as Max, as you can see, I've got behind me uh, uh, in in my office today. Um, uh, they can they can consume those features very quickly um, uh, and actually uh, implement uh, 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 very qu very quickly and, uh, and and move forward. So um, you know, to to us, uh, Smax is a uh, uh, is uh, at the cutting edge with machine learning embedded as well. So we've got lots of really cool features, and, and we're always updating it on a, on a quarterly release. And actually, a large number of our existing customers are already on the latest releases, and that's not even being delivered in a in a SaaS uh, type uh, type setup. Um, we um, but we are actually in the, in the Americas. Uh, if a customer is interested in a SaaS delivery, we also provide that as well. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's really key, and I, I think it has a a wide uh, across all of uh, customers' IT uh, and uh, the enterprise service management, um, they can they can use uh, the the Smack product. Very cool. So, Dean, I I, I think it's a hot area because I believe um, one of the competitors is ServiceNow. Um, how, how does uh, Smack uh, yeah, compete? Yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah. How, how does uh, the solution differ from ServiceNow? Uh, is it different? Uh, what are your you know what are your thoughts on that? So yeah, it's a it's a, it's a good question. Uh, so, from a point of view of, uh, uh, should we say, uh, competitive differences, uh, in terms of base features that you get with uh, ServiceNow and compared to what we do with Smax, is we cover the same standard IT service management capabilities. Uh, in fact, out of the box, a lot of our customers get additional functionality that they don't have to pay for. We include that out of the box with the product. So things like being able to build your own apps, uh, being able to do uh, modifications through what we call codeless configuration, which is something where ServiceNow has historically had a lot of issues with, with trying to do. Um, so we, we've always had that as part of the product from uh, from day one. And the same goes with machine learning. So everyone talks about AI and machine learning as a, as a hot topic for uh, within their within their customer base and within their company. Um, and we have it actually built into the core of the product. So compared to ServiceNow and other competitors that are out there, 
you know, you don't have to buy a third party product and then integrate that into your solution, which could actually be sending your data to, you know, who knows where, should we say, with some of those integrations. Actually, your data is your own. It sits within your own uh, instance, be that using our SaaS or, or if you install it on premise, uh, allowing you to do that. And, and again, that deployment flexibility is something that we offer that a lot of our competitors don't. So whether you take it in a, in a SaaS SaaS way, either from MicroFocus or through one of our partners, or whether you do an on-premise uh, deployment, um, it's the same product. There is no, there is no actual difference. You get the same features and functionality, and you can actually have the flexibility to move between them um, from a from from a product perspective. It's it's you know it's um, you know easy to uh, move from from one to the other as you need. Oh, that covers yeah the question. Absolutely. So do you know? So I'm, I'm curious to know a little bit more more about Max. You mentioned uh, you could use it for um, suggestions for ch a change record. How much time does does this solution save, or uh, what are some other benefits you think Max could do uh, to help people? Sure. So um, uh, Max is uh, obviously our smart virtual virtual agent, and the way the the way that we look at uh, the way that we've implemented Max. Uh, and the machine learning technology, uh, and uh, which is based on Idle and uh, uh, Raza, um, that basically for me, I look at it as as handling the should we say the seventy five percent of the requests that come through to a to a service desk. So a lot of the time that people will phone phone a service desk, uh, or they might send an email to the service desk, um, and there's obviously an interaction that needs to occur there. Um, which can take time, not just for the for the service desk, and um, you know, be that within IT or within other lines of the business, but also for the end user. Max is there to solve to to solve those straight away. So is really be able to understand what the what that end user is asking for, and then deliver that. Uh, you know, suggest the right either. A solution through a knowledge article that's maybe available to the end user, or actually, um, you know, being able to raise the request, be that something for support, you know, or you know, uh, ordering ordering something, or as I sh showed you in the demo, where uh, I updated my contact information, and then you plug that into any automation you have in the back end. Um, the good thing is as well is because of the way that we deliver Max in there, it's actually built on top of the underlying uh, service catalog that you have. Uh, within within your uh, SMAX environment. So that means from a perspective of uh, a customer that's moving across to uh, SMAX or even a customer that maybe is, uh, has started on the journey and, and starting to build out the service catalog, you don't have to configure anything extra at all to get the benefits of MAX. You will start learning based on the way that people interact and raise the tickets that they need to do today. So it can make a really big difference. And it's much more sophisticated than say Clippy was back in the day with Microsoft Office. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, def definitely. <laughs> awesome. All right, we have another user question. Uh, Dean, they want to know, you mentioned in the video about not needing to consume a license for approvals. Can you provide more Correct. details on the SMAC licensing? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, we have, uh, from a point of view of uh, licenses that are consumed, it is purely based on people logging into the system. However, uh, we split that um, into two types, named and concurrent users. So you can have a license that's allocated to a specific individual, or you can have a license that's part of a pool. So let's say you've got, uh, say, 100 licenses in a, in a pool, which you can allocate across uh, a wider number of people, say 200, 300 people, um, who only need to dip in and out of the application. Now, those licenses are only needed if you need to access the agent side of the interface. So what I showed in the first part where I was interacting with Max and using the end user portal, that doesn't actually consume any of those, the, those licenses. So that means that if you need to raise requests or you need to do any approvals, you don't need to do that. That's that's all license free, uh, which is great from a from a business perspective, and especially when we talk about enterprise service management. Because, you know, typically, if I need to do some kind of approval, maybe it's a change in a in, in a HR perspective or from a facilities or a security perspective, and it's a line of business person that needs to do that. Um, they don't want to need to. They don't need to log into the agent interface to to do that approval. And that can be managed on the end user portal or over email. 
um, and, and that way that allows them to uh, uh, obviously not consume a license. So as I say, the, the licenses are only when you need to access on the, the agent side of the interface, which actually going back to the comment earlier on about ServiceNow is a big difference. You know, ServiceNow licensing model uh, requires that you need um, licenses for doing approvals. So that's a, another advantage where we're obviously uh, a lot better for our, our, our customers. Awesome. So, Dean, uh, also wondering, uh, how does SMAC work with, say, an on-premise, on-bridge monitoring uh, solution? That's a very good question. So, um, because we've got um, uh, an integration already with, obviously, our uh, on-prem monitoring or uh, solution, Ops, Ops Bridge. Um, and the way that that works is, obviously, um, you would do typical uh, event monitoring uh and any kind of sort of um aggregation of uh, the the, the uh, events that get raised in there and there's a point where obviously that would raise a ticket within your service management solution so we have an integration already built so that that would raise the ticket for you um and obviously when that ticket gets closed we we'll do the updates back to uh the monitoring system to close off the event or however you set up that integration maybe it triggers a, a process over, over on that side. Um, likewise, because we are uh, API first from a point of view of the way that a lot of the um, system works, it means that uh, if you are using other uh, monitoring systems, um, so you know, obviously we'd prefer you were using our own products, but we know that everyone has uh, uh, systems in systems in place. Um, you can use the API uh, very easily to do the integration and, and create the uh, the appropriate incident record, um, and obviously do the um, event correlation into the system and uh, drive any of the work that you need to do uh, for your support teams to to manage those tickets. So uh, it, we do try to make it as easy as possible for, for whatever event monitoring system you're using. Awesome. So Dean, I don't mean to keep bringing this up. Someone just uh, asked me on Twitter. Uh, you mentioned licensing okay. as another differentiator between SMAC and ServiceNow. Are there any other edge of SMAC over ServiceNow? Um, well, I'd like to think that we're uh, a lot better uh, in every direction. <laughs> Now. Um, I think, I think, as I said, is from a licensing perspective, it's definitely, definitely a lot better. Yeah. Uh, I think we like to think that from a from a customer perspective, uh, we give uh, obviously a lot of um, flexibility around deployment, which is a bit, which is a big difference compared to ServiceNow. Um, where, where, you know, I don't want to uh, bash the competition, should we say, but right, right. You know, whilst they do <laughs> say they provide on-premise uh, deployments. Um, it's it's a lot more expensive, and actually, they you know a lot of customers find out that they they can't actually do that in the in the real world. Um, so that's you know that those are big things, and and also from a time to implement as well. Um, we we get a lot of customers that come to us where they've had, uh, should we say, started on their journey with ServiceNow, and they're uh, one. To even, I've had some customers been three years down the road and not gone fully live with a full service management solution. Whereas, from our perspective with SMACs, because we provide a lot of out of the box best practices, we have uh, a situation where a lot of our customers have gone live, um, you know, uh, in under three months. Um, so you can utilize what we provide, um, and, and I like to say it's it's adopt and adapt. You know, you adopt what we've put in place where we've got our years of experience of our best practices and the workflows that we've done. And then you adapt them to fit your business processes within your organization. That means you can lever all the benefits that we provide with the product, but it also means you can move forward with what we're doing and the future developments we've got uh, planned uh, for the products uh, and the overall uh, service management solutions that we provide. So Dean, you did mention in your session about uh, policy recommendations. Uh, are they, is this a grown library of policy recommendations or the best practices enterprises usually use that you implement into your system to help people as they're creating theirs? Um, so there is some, uh, with this, uh, the CMS solution, there are some uh, out-of-the-box policies uh, that we provide uh, with the solution. Uh, but obviously, as a customer, you can obviously extend those and, 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 and uh, add more if you need to. Very cool. Another question is, uh, what are customers say, uh, saying about SMACs? Uh, what maybe uh, any obstacles of implementing the product that you've seen or uh, best practices of implementing it? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I'd say, I'll go back to the comment I made earlier on about uh, adopt and, and adapt. Uh, I think that's uh, certainly a, a, a good win. I, th I think 
my view is you know we, we talk in uh, with a lot of implementations of any product uh, irrespective of that being uh, smacks or others uh, about trying to work in a more agile way uh, as opposed to um, should we say the old old school way of uh, doing it uh, of a waterfall style project where it's like nine to 12 months plus before you actually get any benefit um, we like to think that there's a lot where you can get away with just loading just your data into Smacks and, and get up and running. And I think I think the the key thing is is to look where you can get some uh, quick wins with what we've already done out of the box. Uh, start to adopt that. Um, for, for, for me, especially with an implementation, it's it's focus on uh, your management of change and your communication um, as you're rolling out the the. the the tool and then and then move forward quickly so almost should we say take a crawl walk run approach so get yourself up and running get the system uh, up and running with the basics so that you can roll out start the rollout and then start to move forward as you start to improve and uh, adapt, you know bring on board other, other processes as you can imagine uh, imagine uh, Smacks has a lot of modules. You know, service management is a lot is a large space, um, so so there's a lot of uh, options you have. So you know, typically a lot of customers tend to go forward with, should we say, um, service request, uh, incident management uh, as a starting point. Maybe look at change management um, before they then start to roll out into the other areas. Great. So Dean, earlier someone mentioned UD UCMB. Um, are customers using? The standards, or how, how is this being adopt, adopted? Yeah, so um, you know, our, our CMS uh, solutions, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, the leading uh, tools in the in the marketplace, um, and uh, certainly from a point of view of um, uh, adoption, we've got a large a large customer base. Um, t typically, a lot with uh, the CMS solution because there's different options around around discovery. Um, you know, you can have like agent-based discovery where you install an agent on a on, on servers, etc., or desktops, or you can do the agentness where it kind of uh, looks over the network to see what it can connect to, and and obviously tries to get more 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 data. Um, we've got a large customer base that tend to use that. Um, you know, and we'll we'll buy we'll buy CMS. Um, and do that discovery, and then they'll plug that into their, should we say, their monitoring tools. So it's got a really nice fit with uh, OpsBridge, as an example, um, um, and likewise with obviously things like DCA and, and NOM as well, um, uh, to help 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 those uh, tools with the monitoring that they do. Great. So do we have another question, user question? Uh, the user wants to know, I heard we're licensing changes to the newer UD UCM, UCDB, can you explain that and what it means? Is there a licensing change? Uh, yeah, so there's probably been uh, some confusion about licensing changes uh, because we actually changed the model uh, and then changed it again uh, to be similar to a previous model. And, uh, and, and basically this was all around about actually streamlining, streamlining uh, the actual uh, processes and uh, our license exchange exchange model. So uh, moving to the latest versions of CMS, so uh, from our 2019-05 or May release as we sometimes call it, uh, it does require uh, a one-to-one -one, uh, with a no-cost license exchange um, uh, and there's a great reference document available uh, and teams that can assist customers who need to do that. And uh, say um, if, if you need to uh, find more information out about that, you know, reach out to us, we can, we can certainly help with uh, filling in the blanks and uh, providing customers with how to move forward. Very cool. So, Dean, I'm pretty new to the solution. Uh, as a product, is it a SaaS? Is it on-premise? How, how does it work? How do I consume SMAPs? Um, so, so from a point of view of uh, of the SMAPs product, um, you've got the flexibility to, to have it however you want. Um, so, um, you know, you can you could you can have your uh, your SMAPs anywhere. Should we say so? Uh, the product can be deployed on premise. So you could, if you've got, uh, should we say, uh, servers or, or VMware environment within your within your own data center, you can deploy it on deploy it on that. Um, we have uh, around the world, we have a number of partners um, that help customers with uh, with deploying and managing that either within their own data centers or using cloud. Uh, and again, talking about cloud, you know, some customers have uh, will use public or they use private cloud. So things like AWS, uh, Azure, Google Cloud, 
uh, as, as examples. You can deploy SMACs uh, on that um, and even utilize some of the latest technology. So uh, where there's things called uh, managed Kubernetes. Um, so Azure has something called uh, Azure Kubernetes services. Uh, Amazon has EKS, which is their equivalent of the managed Kubernetes. Um, and, and that basically means that you can reduce some of your maintenance uh, and utilize those services. Also to note is uh, actually in November of this year, um, uh, so just last, last month, uh, we launched uh, MicroFocus uh, uh, SMACs on, uh, on MicroFocus SaaS uh, for, the, for, for the US and Canada uh, companies. Um, so if com uh, companies that are based within uh, obviously that region, uh, they're interested in a SaaS-like offering, we can, we can help provide that for them uh, as, as well. Nice. So, uh, does Smax have a uh, ESM capabilities? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the core of, um, uh, of of any you know our service management solution, as far as we're concerned, is it is about ESM. So, um, you know, if we think about enterprise service management, um, a lot of, a lot of what that's about, where you're talking about outside of IT, so uh, HR, facilities, uh, security, etc. Uh, typically, there's some kind of request that comes through from it from an end user, um, and you can use our request management module to to start that process off, or even manage it uh, through that process. And our, uh, the way our tasks uh, capability works as well, so you can assign tasks to people who have that as automated processes, which could go, um, you know, either doing updates within the system or to other external systems. Um, but that's not just uh, that. That's just kind of like one way of looking at it. The other thing that we have is what we call uh, Smack Studio. So Smack Studio allows you to build your own build your own apps. Um, so if there's a particular workflow or process where you need to define something very specific, you can use the uh, Studio capability to, to to do that. And you know, again, that's that's something that's that's license license free. Um, the other thing I'll add as well is we. Um, uh, with those with those apps, not only can you build your own, but you can also uh, import uh, apps that are available from our item marketplace. So we have a Smack Studio section on the uh, MicroFocus item marketplace, where people can upload uh, apps that they've created, uh, or you know, be that customers, partners, or even some of our internal teams have done that. Um, and some of the ones that are on there right now are actually for for those enterprise service management ESM use cases. So it's a good example. Um, I actually built an app myself. Uh, and uh, created it for uh, facilities management for visitor registration. Um, and that's available to download and install. It's totally free, customers can use it. And the great thing is, is they can then modify it to fit with their own their, their, their own needs. Uh, sounds awesome. Uh, so Dean, I, I used to work for a large enterprise and we used to have, always have to have on-prem solutions, but it was really difficult to upgrade sometimes. How SMACs yeah. work to upgrade it if, if I have an on-prem solution of it? Sure. No, it's, it's a really good question, actually. So um, the way that um, uh, I haven't really probably mentioned it right till now, but um, SMAX is based on a containerized uh, sort of plat platform. So with a lot of what we're doing across our uh, item uh, portfolio is we've got this approach where um, the actual foundation of the product is based on a uh, contain, you know, uh, containerized solution using Docker and Kubernetes as the as the delivery platform. So that means we uh, bring out uh, that allows us from an R and D perspective to uh, uh, deliver updates and upgrades on a on a regular basis. So Smax as a product has a quarterly release cycle, and every three months we bring out uh, a, a new release. Now, from a point of view of the actual uh, the actual upgrade process. Um, that's that's actually really straightforward to do. So there's a there's a nice uh, GUI uh, for for managing the actual uh, upgrades. Um, and if I actually look at what happened with our uh, our latest uh, um, upgrade that, that we've done, so going from our 2019-08 August release to the 2019.11 release, the upgrade process obviously there's the underlying uh, technology and then the, and then the suite itself. Um, Whilst the overall time to do that upgrade is around about three and a half to four hours, the actual downtime on the overall um, upgrade is uh, down, is less than five minutes. In fact, it's roughly around about two to three minutes uh, per per uh, customer, uh, should we say, 
uh, tenant that you have on on that platform so you know from a customer perspective that that's great because it means you can uh, and because of that code list delivery approach that we do you can always take that consume that latest update uh, um, and also now because of what we're trying to do is uh, try and bridge that gap to uh, to be as, as close to zero downtime as possible um, whilst no one would obviously want to do an upgrade uh, during should we say normal production hours mm-hmm. um, you know the the overall time it takes and and that, and that zero downtime means you can keep the service running uh, and reduce the overall risk and implications of uh, not having a system uh, uh, unavailable to you. Awesome. So Dean, Dean, those are all the questions we have. But before we go, are there any parting words of wisdom you want to leave the Vivid Virtual Days members for Smacks? Um, well, I, I guess I, I guess the biggest thing is, you know, um, the key thing is with our, our Smack solution is there's a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, capability within it. Uh, there's a lot of features and functionality, and hopefully my video just gave you a little bit of a of a taster to that. Um, we have from uh, uh, the ability that if you want to have a play around with uh, Smacks, we have a free trial capability. So just head across to uh, microfocus.com. Uh, slash smacks uh, from there you can go and register for a free trial and, um, and go and actually have a play uh, with a system you'll have full access uh, there's no restrictions it's full full admin uh, capabilities um, so feel free to go and do that um, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, enjoy the world of, uh, of what we provide with uh, with smacks um, and I just want to say, Joe, uh, thanks for having me on the uh, on this session. Uh, I hope uh, what I've done is uh, given a, a good overview uh, and given uh, the people who are viewing um, a great view of our brilliant product. Awesome. Great stuff, Dean. Really appreciate you contributing to Vivid Virtual Days. And thank you so much for all you do. Thank you. All right. Cheers.